The open road is said to be an especially American fascination. For many, it symbolizes freedom, commerce, and adventure. Cars and highways have been at the center of American culture and pop culture, and have played an essential role in U.S. history. But many Americans seem to have a pretty low opinion of the roads they actually drive on. Take a 2018 poll from Monmouth University, which found that almost a quarter of Americans say their local roads and bridges are in poor condition. And another 41% say their roads and bridges are merely in fair condition, as opposed to good or excellent. More than 30% say there are roads in their areas in need of urgent repair. Well, I think it's important for most Americans to realize that our road system is stretched thin in this country. Americans traveled 3.2 trillion miles last year on our roads, and that's a 12 billion mile increase from just the year before, and if you look back 20 years, that's a 612 billion mile increase. So people like to travel, which puts a strain on our roads. So is it fair to say that U.S. roads are in bad shape? Well, some say yes, and some say maybe not. It's fair, it's fair, it is, it is. The roads, the surface transportation system of the United States needs some serious attention right now. Um, you know, we do this infrastructure report card every four years. So in 2017, we graded the roads of the United States, a critical part of the infrastructure, which most people feel every day. That was a grade of D. The American Society of Civil Engineers research is widely cited, but it should be noted the group represents people who do the work of building and fixing roads and bridges. However, other evidence indicates the country is falling behind on road construction and repair. The most current data on pavement quality from 2018 indicates that 20% of the nation's major roads and highways, essentially everything other than local and neighborhood roads, have pavements in poor condition, while 32% of urban roads have pavements pavements in bad shape, according to TRIP. What we hear from transportation agencies is that's the roughness, that's the, the smoothness of the pavements, that's what matters to us as consumers, as the public driving on the roads. But what they see happening at the same time is the subgrades, the surfaces underneath the roads are actually deteriorating faster than they can get to them. And so the challenge is they want to maintain the pavement smoothness so the, the public can see that the pavements are, are being maintained in relatively good condition. But what keeps them up at night is they know they're not doing the long-term work to keep major roads and major highways in good condition in the long term. Bear in mind that urban roads carry about 70% of the nation's traffic. Those numbers have remained relatively stable since 2014. A U.S. Department of Transportation report given to Congress in November 2019 indicated that as of 2014, the nation faced a $435 billion backlog in needed road and highway repairs. The same report found that to improve overall pavement conditions, the U.S. would need to increase annual investment in road repair by 29% from about $51 billion annually to about $66 billion annually. At the same time, traffic on roads is increasing. Vehicle travel rose 8% from 2013 to 2018, according to TRIP. Improving U.S. infrastructure tends to be a popular political issue in the United States and tends to attract bipartisan support. The impact of rough roads is that it's causing the public more money. When, when roads are in rough condition, it's beating up your vehicle. Vehicles are going to wear out that much more quickly. They need more routine maintenance, and, and also they're using more, more gasoline. TRIP estimates that the average cost per American motorist is $603 annually driving on rough roads, and that totals $130 billion of additional operating costs that falls on the consumers. President Donald Trump made improving U.S. infrastructure a key issue in his campaign, but Democratic politicians have also called for more investment in roads, bridges, highways, and other bits of infrastructure. But there is a lot of nuance to this story. I just have, have tried to urge people to be careful. You know, when they say American infrastructure is crumbling, you know, and, and universally poorly maintained, I think that's a, a simplistic statement, and I think it's a bit... Uh, overwrought. Roads across the U.S. can be pretty bad, even terrible, depending on a variety of factors. 
The roads, highways, and bridges spanning the country are funded, owned, and maintained by a complex cluster of different government agencies at the local, state, and federal levels. The federal government doesn't actually own most of the roads in America, save a small percentage, mostly on or around federal property, such as national parks. Most of the country's highways and roads, including the so-called national highway system, are owned and maintained by states or municipal governments. 75% of roads in the U.S. are maintained by local governments, and another 19% are maintained by the states, according to TRIP. However, the roads state governments maintain are often the most heavily traveled and include the interstate highway system. The federal government, through the Highway Trust Fund, provides a considerable portion of the money used to build and maintain the highways in the national system, $46 billion in 2019. That money is funded solely by the federal gas tax, which drivers pay every time they pump fuel. By the way, the government has not raised the gas tax since 1993. More on that later. The Federal Highway Administration gives money from the trust fund to the states to build and fix highways that meet criteria set by the federal government. States also charge their own gas taxes on top of the federal tax, which they can use to repair roads according to their own guidelines. Then, cities, metropolitan areas, or other local governments fund the repair and construction of their roads, typically through property taxes or other sources of revenue. What this means is that someone can be driving on a well-maintained highway onto a road that seems riddled with potholes or is in otherwise poor quality. That is because those two roads, even though they are connected to each other, are funded through two totally different systems. Some who study the issue say the large-scale roads that make up the national highway system are actually improving in quality. It's the local roads that tend to be struggling. What this means is there can be a huge difference in quality from one road to another. Poorer areas, for example, often don't have the tax money needed to repair their roads. But wealthier areas with a large number of roads can have difficulty making repairs as needed as well. Some parts of the country have a harder time maintaining roads simply because they have harsher climates, which puts more stress on pavement. The states that have the worst quality roads are all over the country and include Hawaii, according to TRIP and based on Federal Highway Administration data. Most of these roads are likely to be maintained by local governments, TRIP's researcher Rocky Moretti told CNBC. It is worth noting that four out of those 10 states are in the Northeast, where the climate tends to be harsh. In contrast, several of the states with the fewest problems on their roads are in the southern part of the country. One of the biggest issues facing surface transportation at whatever level of government seems to be a lack of steady funding. Some groups, such as the Automobile Association of America, better known as AAA, favor raising the federal gas tax, which hasn't been touched since the early 1990s. The Government Accountability Office says that the 18.4 cent per gallon tax on gasoline enacted in 1993 is worth about 11 cents today due to inflation. The other problem is that cars on the road are becoming more fuel efficient, which is pushing down the amount of gas customers need to buy. People who drive electric cars aren't contributing to the highway fund at all since they are not buying gas. The more common hybrid, electrics, and other fuel-efficient vehicles become, the less money there will be going to repair the roads through the gas tax. In recent years, the Highway Trust Fund has relied increasingly on general tax revenue to cover its budgets rather than money from the gas tax. Congress transferred a total of about $141 billion in general revenues on eight separate occasions to the Highway Trust Fund from 2008 through 2015, according to the GAO. Funding problems are expected to continue. In March 2016, the Congressional Budget Office estimated that $107 billion in additional money would be required to maintain current levels of spending, plus inflation, from 2021 through 2026, notes the GAO. With all these changes taking place, some argue in favor of other ways to fund the national highway system, including developing a new system that would charge drivers per mile driven rather than charging a tax for fuel. In the meantime, some states are taking their own steps to compensate for the declines in federal funding. What we've seen since 2013 is approximately half the states have put in place significant long-term increases in user fees. Uh, and that, that's just been a recognition that uh, the money wasn't coming from Washington, or at least it hadn't up until now. Uh, local governments were already under a lot of stress trying to raise their funding sources. And so state governments have, have shown a lot more 
willingness over the last several years to step forward. Uh, but now what we're starting to see, particularly at the state level, is a recognition into the long-term future uh, that ultimately, uh, at least the motor fuel tax, which has been a critical source, uh, is going to have a hard time keeping up with the changes in technology. States such as Virginia are charging state taxes to raise more money, while states such as Texas are experimenting with something called managed lanes, where private companies install special toll lanes on roads to allow drivers to bypass traffic jams by paying a toll. In a patchwork system, expect patchwork solutions.